Welcome back, viewers at home. You're tuned in right here on Prime Live. Joined, joining me this evening is Zikanye Geza. Now, he, in 2013, graduated with a bachelor's degree in accounting at the University of Western Cape, which he then furthered his studies in getting a master's in business from WITS. That happened in 2018. And then he made his debut in a BAT Africa show called Minds of Man. That was in 2016 catch the timeline. Now, in 2019, Itemba telenovela as a pozoi, excuse the butcher in that, he casted in at least almost eight films. Wow. As well as commercial adverts, Oros, McDonald's. 2019, began a music career. 2020, released an album. Zikanya, welcome to Prime Life. Thank you. That was... Uh... <laughs> that was my, you, did you have to take it back to my school? I had to. I had to make sure I introduce you proper because yeah. you've been on on a, on a move since yeah, no, 2013. You. You've been doing something, achieving something rather in your life. Yeah. And just to start with 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 uh, uh, um, as to your journey. Now, from you know, we always hear this, but I want to just get it from you. From studying accounting and and a masters in business, and then doing a whole shape shift to media industry. How did that happen? Well, as uh, as a young person living in our country, it's not the at the forefront of careers to want to be an actor or musician, or especially back then in, in 2010, 20, 2009, Abu Casper dropped out of school uh, to do music, and it was frowned upon. So uh, my family as well was on that notion of uh, you should get your your studies done first and have a fallback plan. Mm and have something to you know to work with in in the you know uh, corporate space as opposed to the the very vague and you know uh, mysterious world of of, of uh, acting and drama and, and music so it was a fallback plan and at some point i decided i was finished because I, I i think i worked for two three years in that corporate space mm -hmm. I was not happy. I was I was very depressed. I was uh, longing for what I'd really been good at in, in high school and, and primary school, which was drama and, and, and dramatic arts and, and music. So I was yearning for that gap in my life to be filled, and that's what I did. I made the switch. Phew. Now, I'm sure you made your parents proud by bagging those degrees. Listen, the second one is an embellishment. I decided I was finished. Ah. <laughs> I just called it a day and, you know, just w tried, uh, dove deep into, like, the workspace and seeing if I can make enough money mm -hmm. to sustain myself to feed this dream that I had. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it, it, it was some tough years, but even well, <laughs> after having quit, the whole space of, you know, uh, into, uh, what you call this corporate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. entering the, the arts, uh, was very challenging, very... I was a very broke artist for a very long time. <laughs> We've heard that a lot. A lot yeah. of them, eh, now that are rocking billions, they'll tell you they started from humble beginnings. Oh, yeah, no. It, life will humble you during those stages. And yeah. You have but to be soldier through. Having worked with so many production companies, what do you love the most about, you know, your work, meaning your craft as an actor? I love that we tell stories, uh, sometimes stories that will never be heard by someone who might not have come from that background, you know? Mm -hmm. I come from an underprivileged background. Mm -hmm. My grandparents scraped together two shillings from, you know, that apartheid situation that we had. Mm. Uh, my grandfather went to Lovedale, which was the same primary school that Abo Robert Mugabe went to and mm. so forth and so on. And then he became a principal and he believed so, like solidly in education, which, you know, I, I'm very happy about, but he was, <laughs> he was, <laughs> One of the people that I disappointed when I left the education space, um, or rather the you know corporate space. So um, I love the fact that we can tell those stories mm -hmm. and, and tell uh, the stories of uh, people that came before us and, and had it rough and had it hard. Um, and we can also tell the success stories that we have today uh, in, in this day and age. Like I feel like we, we, we're diving into a space where the youth needs to take a hold of their, their future of the modes of uh, you know influence your Instagrams, your mm. TikToks. There's so many modes and mediums to express yourself these days. It just takes a little bit of responsibility and a little bit of focus uh, channeled into those spaces, and you can make your dreams come true if you really want to be a storyteller, which I feel I've been uh, tossed to be. It's not something I would rather say that I chose. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that just overcomes me each and every day that I need to be able to 
have a channel to tell this story because you hear new stories every day. Uh, mm -hmm. You hear um, about Jeffrey Dahmer recently, and we have South African Jeffrey Dahmers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that we haven't heard of that yet. That we haven't heard of yet, but they, they're popping out of the woodworks, and mm -hmm. somebody needs to tell those stories and make people aware that there's so much going on at many times in life, and I feel like that, that, that's a very adrenaline uh, fulfilling part of my life where I, I can share somebody's story who probably would have been overshadowed, you know? Mm. Yeah. Now, you know, with your recent, I won't say recent in a sense like yesterday, but most recent, I was watching this telenovela and you were quite convincing as a very <laughs> rude and not so, very rather hostile patient. And I mean, like doctors yeah. deal with that. What did you channel to best carry out such an act? So they gave me the brief and it was a very vague brief. It was that this guy is a forex trader and he's going to give, uh, he's going to give the, the doctors uh, grief and hell. Mm. Um, I channel <laughs> all the moments in my life where I've had like road rage. Mm. Have you ever had road rage? And you f all the time. You f yeah, just <laughs> that one thing that irritates you, mm. you know, and you, 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 you can't, you know, bottle it up anymore. Yeah. So all those f moments of frustration that I've, I've, I generally have in my life um, had to come to play that moment and mm. to negate the fact that I'm a humble person who's kind to other people and has a, a temperament that is sound. Mm. Now I had to, you know, ask all of that and just think, what would I do in a situation where if somebody peed me off and um, I had no cap? <laughs> So I just, just pop. I, I, I let loose and, and let those emotions come. And also my mother was a nurse, so it wasn't really far-fetched. Like, uh -huh. I, she's, she's told me many stories of how she faces rude patients mm. at, in, in, her, in her work life. And it was just very, it was diff very difficult because, I mean, in, in the moment, you just feel a little bit of a scum and you just like, oh, yeah. like, did I take it too far? <laughs> but, you know, it, for, the, for what it's worth, it was really entertaining. People loved it yeah. and people loved to hate the character. The character, and, yeah. yeah. How many takes did it take for you to just I'm capture a one that? One take one. Uh, one take. I don't I don't Ooh. I don't fluff, I don't do those uh, you know when Licking. it's action it's action. You bring the money and then you 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 you, you know, I can't complain if the sound guy is, you know it's uh, not right, uh, you know, is not right or having a bad day. We're all here to make, you know, great television. So mm -hmm. I come there prepared and my lines are prepared and what I want to say is you know is is gonna pop out how it's gonna pop out and the energy is going to be a hundred percent with the actors that I work with. So yeah, I, I, I think at some point there was, you know, some <laughs> somebody else other than myself I would mention mm -hmm. who it was, but who was having a hard time. But I think they were just having a bad day. Bad day but yeah. yeah um, so yeah. about your career, what are your plans for the future? What are you? Because you've done music, you've done acting, you've worked in corporate. Yeah. Are you still going to hone that? Uh, craft of yours in acting or you're gonna probably seeing you in like international <laughs> movies what's 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 your, what's your future like i think um my 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 basic uh five-year plan is to at least make it to the head office um uh, to hollywood because that's where the real money is is mm -hmm. at i mean we have some money but, but we still as... there's 50 million people in this country 60 at this point uh, that's you know that's a small uh, amount of people as opposed to you know the global scene which uh, is what I'm trying to tap into and and expose you know the the because all eyes are on South Africa right now mm -hmm. whether it's my piano whether it's the actual movies we make whether it's any media that you see there's a keen interest from the world on what is happening with these South African people you know this, mm. so I want to give them that and uh, I've already started my production company it's called Generation Gap um, mm -hmm. So I like to bridge the gap between all these generations because there's Gen Zs, there's Gen yep. X. There's new generations that are being invented <laughs> right now. It comes and it goes. That's why we're going to have to have a new alphabet at this point. Yeah. So um, I've started my production house and I'm also um, d diving deep into music now. Uh, I've got a very promising uh, you know, thing in the woodworks right now. I don't want to say too much, yeah, but yeah. Um, also compiling my, my album. But basically... Imagine a uh, Jamie Foxx or a um, Will Smith in my shoes, basically, Ooh, okay. in this climate. So I'm trying to explore all the talents that I have. I'm playing with the toys that God gave me, mm. and I'm seeing where they lead me, and I'm, I'm taking it day by day. So the main goal is to make sure that the world gets to see that and 
um, not just remain in South Africa, but yeah. Before I let you go, I just want to know, like you've been in TV for quite some time. You've done a whole lot of telenovelas and some films. What were some of your favorite roles and why is that? Okay, my favorite role mm -hmm. was the one that you butchered. <laughs> oh, Potsoy. Oh, uh, yeah. Potsoy was, was a, special, a special character uh, for me because it took me out of my comfort zone. I was always typecast as this um, F boy. You know, mm. I know this is live TV. I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. But I was always typecast as that guy who, you know, is, um, you know, going to play the pretty boy and date girls and break their hearts and blah, 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 blah. Mm. So it was the first role that I got that was, um, it was a mentally ill guy who stayed in the village and he knew everybody's secret, secrets. Oh. And he had Down syndrome, so I had to do the research for that and I went to various uh, institutes. I went to one in Bramfontein, observed the kids there and um, it, it basically took me out of my comfort zone and mm. it really helped me for it because I understood my craft and where I could take myself even more. <laughs> um, getting into character, getting out of character, and because I'm a method actor, so it, it takes a lot to get out of character when you in character. character. And it was one of my most challenging roles, and it was one of my most fun roles because, because um, I guess it was also because of the caliber of actors I was working with. Oh. I was working about Brenda Ngoli, like Ovati Sondara, and um, you know, very talented people who who got me out of my shell as well. And, and made me realize that I am capable and I, I do belong in the room that I was in with the people that I was with, with you know? Mm. So that was one of the roles that really uh, solidified my mentality in that I can actually do this and I'm good at it. Secondly was obviously uh, the <laughs> research <laughs> Ben Jen one. Ooh, that was I a lot of fun. We, the crew from the crew, like, I think it was 50% play and 50% work. Because oh. they flew me to Durban for back and forth, you know, for a few weeks and stuff. And um, uh, whenever we would get there, we would go clubbing. Mm. And, you know, we're shooting on Monday. And we'd party from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And have to be on set, hungover on a Monday, and looking at the guy that you were partying with, who's the, the second AD, just like, I know you're feeling the way I'm feeling right <laughs> now, and I'm supposed to deliver these lines. But it was fun in that it pushed me to enjoy like what I what I did as opposed to just always take it seriously mm. so it was a lot of fun um, in that sense as well uh, and apart from you know uh, looking because I I think for a week I watched Durban Jen and mm -hmm. I saw how serious the doctors are yeah. there they're very serious and I got to just you know make fun of them <laughs> the oh, entire time okay just well, to break the just ice just to break the ice just like you know what do you know what you're actually doing yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but it was it was very fun in that but, sense but yeah. uh, Zukanya, just to close off um one thing we can say passion can be quite expensive what word of advice would you impart to our viewers at home who are probably ch chasing something that they strongly believe is their passion but you know finances or something is an obstacle for them yeah it's like any other job in the world actually um you have to study, and that's you know your parents have to fork out one hundred and fifty thousand rands worth of fees over three years or whatever. Anything in this world that you really want is going to cost money. Mm. It's just about making the plan and figure and solving for X. You know they teach you mm. solve for X in, in the school, and you never know why they're introducing um, letters into math. <laughs> but it's basically just uh, this world is what you make it, and if you really want something, you you just have to hone in and and break it down bit by bit. There's a saying, I don't know who came up with this, but it's very relevant for any career path that you have. How do you eat an elephant? Mm. Steak by steak, bit by bit. That's the only way to get through it. And you build a house brick by brick. So it's in the same way that you have your passion, you just have to maybe look at other people who've done it before you mm -hmm. and how they, they've done it and also apply those methods into your current situation because nobody's situation is ever going to be the same as your situation so you need to look around you look who your support system is your your people around you uh what access do you have to um, you know the, the the means to make your dream come true whether it be you know like i said the platforms that you have your instagrams your tiktoks it's free mm. to download tiktok and act on tiktok and one day somebody's going to catch wind of the fact that hey there's this kid who does a b c on d on tiktok and their numbers are growing and they're doing very well and they're actually very talented. Mm. Should we get in touch with them? And somehow 
if you just keep your head down and, and do the work and, and fill in the, the hours, the 10,000 hours that it takes to be a master at anything, it's, it's going to happen for you mm. one, one way or another. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Zukaini. And we you. wish you all yes. the best for your production, as well as your production company, as well as your other endeavors in life. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Viewers at home, that was Zukanya, an actor at that, and a musician, a graduate. I mean, I could name it all. But on that note, we take an ad break. See you just after this. <laughs>